I saw some data with Altos Research showing that canceled listings and expired listings are growing nationally, and it's not happening here in Arizona. Hi, Rick with Rick Helps Real Estate. I'm, stick with me. I'm going to go through the actual numbers that we're looking at right now in our market. And keep in mind that when we look at things that happened over the past seven days, that that's going to include Labor Day weekend. So it skews things just a little bit. But one of the things that we're seeing here is we look at active listings. They have gone up, not by much. It's made a little bit of an increase. Now, I thought it'd be going down a little bit as we got into September. But we've gone from down here 17,600 to 18,700. So where in the world are those coming from? Well, one of the things that's happening is you can see here when I move my ugly mug, um, that this blue line on the top is new listings in total. So I take new listings that come on and I subtract cancels and subtract expireds and get a number of new listings that are on the market. And then the line on the bottom here is contracts. So you can see this dip here that was Labor Day weekend. So they're coming back up now. We're sitting here at 2560, but new listings are what is that 3090 so the gap has grown and that is what's adding to the total number of listings that we saw when we took a look at total listings for our market and that was this one right here and again i'll move myself so that's what's adding to it now if i look here and say okay the listing success rate in other words you've listed your house is it moving and it has come down. It's certainly been lower before. We're sitting here at 69%. And it's been lower before back here when everything fell off the wagon. And, of course, during the silly season, 93% of all homes were getting their asking price, their listing success rate. And I should rephrase that. It doesn't really mean they got their asking price. It simply means they listed it. And they sold. So right now it's starting to slip a little bit. Nothing to panic about, but that's the number that we're looking at. Here's canceled. Kind of a busy chart, but canceled listings in our market have gone down, especially going into September. They have not gone up. Even when I looked at expired listings, I was expecting a huge spike because they always happen at the first of the month. They expire like the 31st, and then you look at the first, the number pops way up. Didn't didn't happen. So what's going on in Arizona? Why aren't canceled listings spiking like they are, are across the country? Let's look at some of the daily observations that we have here from the Cromford market. And let me blow this up just a hair. And so these are the affidavits of value that have been counted and analyzed for Maricopa County's August filings. This is what's great about Cromford. They go in and get all this stuff and compile it, tell us what the heck is going on. And they're saying that there were 5,936 closed transactions down 9% from August of 2023 and down 6.2% in July. Pretty significant number to be down 9% month over month. There were 1,450 closed new homes down 9.6 from August and up 6.4 from July. There were 4,510 closed resale transactions down 8.9 from 4,948 in August 23 and down 9.5% in July. But the new home sales median price was 513. The resale was 450. And theirs was up and ours was unchanged from July. <clears throat> Here's some data, kind of some devil in the details here. There were 22 working days in August 24 versus 23 in August 23. So the 9% drop in closings is more than we would expect from the 4.3% decrease in the number of working days. New home closings fell harder year over year with a drag drop of 9.6%, while resales fell 8.9, more than double the change in working days. So closing volumes were poor across the board and we've been seeing that prices bounced back a little compared with july surprise surprise huh the combined peak remains at 490 so we remain four percent below that level achieved in may of 2022 overall we see an annual rise in the median price of 2.4 percent which is not a far cry from our current rate of inflation the general picture 
is of low volume and stable pricing. So they are saying we definitely have low volume, but nothing's falling apart yet. We're not seeing house prices come, come flying down. And low volume, um, it's been that way pretty much all year. We've gone from 2,200 to 2,500 to 2,200 to 2,500. It's not changing. All of the chatter that's coming out telling you that the central bank's going to lower rates in September and get ready because when that happens, the buyers are going to come out. So that 2,500 is probably going to become 3,000. It's not going to happen. Why? Because the anticipation of the rate cut for September has already been put into effect in the mortgage-backed securities and the mortgage rates in the market. The only thing that could change is if the Fed decides to lower rates at lower than expected, in other words, going 0.25 instead of 0.50, you may actually see a little bit of an increase in mortgage rates. Now, my favorite chart that only gets updated once a month is this one here. And this is the, uh, I seem to be getting in the way a lot today. Supply and demand index. You may remember last week I was watching that red number and said if that red number goes below the blue number and they cross, that's downward pricing pressure. Happens every time. It's just a simple measure of supply and demand. We'll take a look at the red number. It kind of flatlined. And the supply button uh, on the demand, the supply side actually came down a little bit. So they didn't cross. So this tells you that what you see today is what we're going to see tomorrow. There's not a whole lot going on that's rattling the market there and changing much. And we're seeing that. Uh, across the board. There's still pockets where houses are moving and there's pockets where it's going very slow. The number of price changes that we have, if I can look that up here for a moment, bear with me. Um, new price changes show us here um, having a slight uptick of 2,149 uh, from 1997. So those are price reductions. People listed their house and said, well, that didn't work, so I'm going to reduce the price. And I'm going to push back a little bit on comments that I read that say, you know, sellers are just too greedy. Look, if you owned a house, let me ask you, don't you want to sell it for the most you can get, just like you do your car? So you're going to try. So you're going to put it out there and you're going to try it. And if it doesn't work, you're going to either lower the price or you're going to pull it off the market. What we're seeing right now is people are saying nationally, well, I'm going to try again next year. So they're pulling them off. They've got a lot of equity. They're saying, I'm going to give it the old college try. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to pull it off. Now, look, if buyers weren't buying the homes, they wouldn't be able to support those prices. And I'm talking closed prices. If we've gone up 2.4%, that's not because realtors pushed it. I read something the other day. Yeah, realtors discourage you from lowering their price so they can make more commissions. How much commission do I make if you don't sell your house? Zero. So we do not. In fact, it's usually harder to get sellers to pull down on their price when we look at the numbers and go, well, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, we've been sitting on this house for 90 days now and it's not getting any activity. I suggest we take an aggressive price drop. And uh, that's usually not received very well. So it's the opposite that happens. But prices are all driven by buyer demand simply put buyer demand drops off prices will come down naturally we've got a lot of people that need to sell they're moving lifestyle changes so we're going to see the normal listing of homes that are going on currently but along with that right now we've got election jitters and that's just causing people to pause they're just waiting all of the numbers are supporting that it's not changing though the price tra trajectory on, on real estate is it and that's what I've been saying for several months, pretty much all year. Elections don't change the general direction of pricing. We haven't seen pricing go down. We haven't seen it go up. We've had it stay at this same level, even as we sit here and say, oh, no, the election's coming. So um, that's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you think of the market in your area. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com. Take care.